So he, here is how the form actually uh, shows. So you can see that uh, basically uh, you have to put your first name, last name, and obviously you have to put the, the name of uh, the estate. Actually, uh, you have to put uh, the uh, the EIN for the trust also, and you have to really check all that that apply to uh, the when it comes to this estate. So you put the if uh, you know if it's, if it's a simple trust, a round top trust, and so on and so forth. Okay, so you have all kinds of. Uh, Tr uh, estates categories to actually check so you have to check everything that's applicable and you have to put your name and title of uh, the fiduciary so if you are a uh, working for a fiduciary fiduciary organization that actually uh, follows uh, this 1041 so th this is what it is and you have to put the date the entity was created you put the date here to put the the, the, the straight address everything so it's pretty straightforward so if there is anything from uh, a all the way to e that applies uh, or f rather if that applies to the return here, you have to put it here. So in our case, we have an initial return. So there is not a, a final return or an amended return. A final return will actually happen if the the the, 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 the estate or trust was actually, uh, let's say, dissolved or some, or sort of uh, dissolved for any way, shape, shape or form. So now let's talk about the income. So the income part here. So the income, we put $100,000. So the income that uh, the estate generated this year was $100,000. You have to put total dividends. So if there are dividends that were paid into the, the estate this year, you have to include it here. So in our case, we have a half, we have a four hundred thousand, and uh, so you have to actually uh, separate. So when we talk about total total ordinary dividends, you have uh, a uh, categorization of dividends. You have uh, let's say uh, qualified dividends that are allo that are allocable to beneficiaries, and also that those that are allocable to an estate and trust. So in our case, we have 50-50. And if there is any big business income or loss, you have to attach Schedule C. So basically, in our case, we actually, uh, the, the estates generated $85, $8,500,000. And if there is any capital gains or loss, we have to, uh, so half a million. And basically, the thing is that if there is any farm income or loss, you have to attach. So for every income uh, item, you have to attach the, the ancillary schedule that really applies to it. So whether it is a Schedule A, Schedule C, no, sorry, Schedule C, Schedule D, Schedule F, or in in on line seven you had a uh, form form uh, forty nine seven. This is uh, ordinary gain or loss, and then uh, so total income here is uh, ten million on form nine. By the way, boss, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Make yourself comfortable. You are going to enjoy today's conversation. Next, you have to go to line 11, line 10 first. If there's an interest, and in, in our case, it's 25,000, and taxes of 75,000 here, fiduciary fees. So again, here I'm speaking about the uh, deductions here though, okay? We, from line uh, 10 to 22, we have the, the, the deductions. In other words, we have the expenses that uh, the, uh, the estate incurred this year, okay? So interest, taxes, fiduciary fees. If you pay, let's say, uh, if you pay uh, another organization to handle uh, the estate's affairs, you have to pay the person here. And uh, if there is a, a charitable deduction, this here is uh, it's actually featured on Schedule A, Line 7. So I'm here on Line, th line 13, by the way, okay? If you actually have paid uh, some other fees to professionals, such as attorneys, accountants, and return preparers, so really here, you put it on uh, 14. So everything is lumped into uh, 14. So here we are, we paid a $50,000. And uh, so on line 16, you have to uh, you have to follow the instructions in terms of the math. So here we have a uh, $500,000. $500, so you are just the gross income for uh, for this uh, estate here is 9.5 million. So you take a 10 million minus a half a million, so 9.5 million. And so if there is, so uh, on line 18, Income distribution deduction for in our case it was uh, one million. A state tax deduction, including certain generating uh, generation uh, skipping taxes. Here we have a half a million. Qualified business income. So you have to attach the appropriate form though to make to make sure that you can qualify. So in our case it was hundred thousand. The exemption four hundred thousand. And uh, so when you add all the lines uh, eighteen to through twenty one, in our case on line twenty two you put two million. And the taxable income here is uh it's a uh, 7.5 million so you can see that the total tax here is uh 1.5 million and total payments 1.1 million three hundred fifty thousand dollars so the tax due here is uh one hundred fifty thousand dollars because uh you actually paid less than uh the uh than than was owed on behalf of the uh, of the estate 
So you you want you have to put the uh, like basically the the amount you want to you want to pay. And uh, at the bottom, you have to sign. Don't forget to sign your uh, Form 1041. You have to put your uh, EIN of, of the fiduciary if this is a financial institution. And uh, so if you want the IRS to contact somebody else to discuss this this tax return, please, you want to check the appropriate box. You want to put also the paid preparer. Use, like uh, you want to put uh, the information about the paid preparer so the IRS knows, knows exactly what's, what's really happening with uh, this Form 1041. By the way, boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about Form 1041. As I was going through the form, I actually spoke to you about a, a series of schedules. And so I want to really quickly talk about that so we have a clear idea what those schedules are so you, you, you can also tell exactly what's really happening. So when we talk about Form 1041, you have Schedule A, you have Schedule B. And so Schedule A really is not applicable to our situation. So I put not, not applicable and A. And uh, I want to move on to Schedule B. So Schedule B, this is actually an income distribution, income distribution deduction. So your adjusted gross income is $9, nine million. And uh, total net uh, gain from Schedule D for Form 1041. Remember, Schedule D, Form 1041 is, is different from Schedule D, Form 1040. Okay. And so in our case here on line three, the amount that is applicable is $750,000. And uh, there's no uh, amount from uh, line from schedule A, line four. And so nothing. And so the, the capital gains for the tax year, including on schedule A, line one, actually amounted to a quarter of a million. So quarter of a million, it is what it is. And if there is a distributable, you have to put the, the distributable net income here is uh, 10,000. And if there's income required to be distributed currently, it's one million. Remember, when we talk about an estate, basically not all income uh, has to be distributed in the year, right? Because this is how the, the estate survives. The, the, the it's just uh, an investment vehicle. So, right, but a portion of the income, a portion of the cash inflows, I mean, not inflows, portion of the cash outflows needs to be distributed, and not needs, but it has to be in some cases. So, if that that's applicable to your situation, then. On line 99, nine, you put the, the amount and uh, total distribution, you have to put on line 11, 1 million. And uh, basically, the, the, the tentative income distribution, 1 million. And the tentative income distribution deduction here will be uh, $10 million. So, bottom line is the uh, income distribution deduction here, we have uh, 1 million. Next, I want to talk to you about Schedule D. So Schedule D, G is really an important element here. So we have a uh, tax computation and payments. So uh, first, let's talk about the tax. So tax on taxable income, basically uh, seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Tax on lump sum distribution, two hundred fifty. So basically, the total tax here is one million. And uh, if there is any foreign tax credit, let's say uh, you actually you actually invested in in uh, in overseas for instance so you have to put the uh, information relating to uh, this uh, information here so general business credit so first of all on line 2a foreign tax credit you have uh, 100,000 if you claim that you have to attach form 1116 uh, um, in the interest of time here and I'm not going to speak too much about certain certain forms here but uh, you have to whatever you whatever you uh, claim you have to attach the schedule so the IRS have a clear idea what you are talking about and they can trace things uh, back and forth okay and if you are claiming a general business credit you need to attach form 3800 so you have to uh, so we here we're saying uh, 300,000 and uh, if there's credit for a prior year minimum tax 50,000 bond credit 50,000 so total credits here we have a half a million okay and so when you subtract line 2e from 2d so you will have uh, 1 million minus half a million. The amount is still the same, half a million. And if there is a tax on any uh, on the ESBT portion of uh, of the trust, so it will be 75,000. And household employment tax. So here, let's say you employed somebody to uh, like a nanny or whatever. So we have 15,000. And other taxes uh, and, and amounts do 10,000. So when you add everything, so when you add everything, what will happen is, is that on line uh, nine, total, total tax is 600,000. Next, you have Schedule G, Schedule G payments. So let's say uh, you actually uh, paid during the year a certain amount to the IRS, so that now you want to reconcile what you paid. So this, this is what you have on the screen here. You have uh, 
on line 19 you have uh total amounts that you paid 1.3 1 million three hundred fifty thousand dollars dollars and uh the other the next session is uh other information so here nothing is applicable to us so we put no 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 all the way to the bottom but you still need to uh, fill that form anyway that side of uh, the form by the way boss i want to quickly remind you of today's topic we are having a conversation about form 1041 this is about estates and uh trusts Let me give you the overview here so we have a clear idea what we're speaking about so form 1041 is actually uh filed by the trustee or representatives of uh, a descendant's uh, state trust or the bankruptcy estate and uh it's one of those things where you have to understand what really happens and part of uh, section 1041 of the irc is uh, actually it help taxpayers actually uh fulfill their uh, tax obligations if you will especially uh when it comes to uh designated assets okay and uh, it's one of those things where when we talk about form 1041 it's actually uh, a form that really under that really explains everything contextualizes everything and the executor trustee or personal representative of the estate or trust is responsible for filing form 1041 and uh, form 1041 does not need to be filed if the estate or trust generated an annual gross income less than six hundred dollars unless one of uh, the beneficiaries is a non-resident alien so, you know, there are situations where the IRS is okay if you don't file. Now, certain income or deductions may require a complementary form of schedule. As you, as you probably saw a little earlier, you have to attach a certain uh, certain ancillary forms. And form, 10, form 1041 is due by the 15th day of the fourth month after the close of the tax year and can be sent electronically or by mail. So, if you listen to me right now, you, you do not have to worry too much about uh, filing Form 1041 yourself. You can just have a uh, accounting software, I mean, accounting tax software do the work for you, okay? And it's one of those things where you have to really understand that, you know, it's part of your responsibilities, not only as a, as a executor, tr executor, trustee, or personal representative of the estates, but it's also as part of your, uh, your obligations as a citizen to file your taxes. That way you are you stay out of trouble. The IRS is okay with you, you know, blah 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 blah. One thing I want to say here is that when we talk about uh, when we talk about Form 1041, it's one of those things where the IRS just wants to have a clear a clear idea of, of what's really happening. Remember that money transferred to beneficiaries can be can be deducted. So whenever a beneficiary receives a distribution, let's say uh, from the estate or trust he or she should be issued a schedule k1 detailing the amounts which they will uh, which he or she will then report as income on his or her return so again the the, the transparency transparency is there So how do you file form 1041 i mean the things here the thing is that when we talk about form 1041 it's a, one of those things where you actually can file it electronically or you can file it uh, manually if uh, you have a complicated quote unquote complicated form 1041 it's just a lot better to do things manually okay especially because uh, the 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 fiduciary of uh, the estate has to file this and remember, we're speaking about uh, April 15th, okay? So really, uh, it's one of those things where April 15th, if uh, the uh, the day of the death, let's say, uh, what I want to say, when we talk about estate taxes, usually the calendar year starts on the day of the death and ends on December 31st. And the Form 1041 due date of April 15th of the following year. And it's one of those things where you have to understand that if uh, any, anything is happening in the meantime, you have to actually still comply. Form 1041 can be sent via email or found on the IRS website. And uh, you can also uh, use uh, h and Block, TurboTax, you can use uh, Tax Act or some of the, pr the prominent uh, tax software tools so that you can actually file things uh, seamlessly. One thing I want to say here is that when we talk about Form 1041, especially for estates and uh, trust, there there could be a state uh, sort of component to this thing too. So you you have to see whether or not the states where the uh, the 1041 is located, where where the responsibilities are when it comes to filing your taxes as well. Because you can't just say you know what I'm just paying uh, I'm just paying my federal taxes. No, you have to also uh, abide by the regulations at the state level so you, so it's clear to everybody what kind of responsibilities you have 
And um, one thing I want to say here is that when we actually analyze uh, the tax uh, season, you need to understand that it's not just about you filing Form 1041. It's also you filing Form 1040, for instance, you filing Form uh, 10, uh, 1045, 10, 1065. So you, you have a constellation of, uh, of uh, forms that you have to file so that you are able to uh, focus on what really matters, which is really uh, like uh, developing your business or at least uh, making sure that the estate is uh, generating more revenue. So when we talk about Form 1041, I just want to uh, close to this conversation by saying that the person who files the, the form is not the uh, it's not the uh, like a the business it's not a business person. Okay, the executor trustee or personal representative of an estate or trust that generates more than 600 in annual gross income after the uh, descendant passes away and before the assets are distributed to their beneficiaries. So this benef this executor trustee or a personal asset representative can actually uh, like it has a, a lot of options. Okay. And it's one of those things where you have to make sure that you are complying with your, with your tax uh, obligations. And uh, it's one of those things, again, where you have to understand that funeral expenses are not deductible on Form 1041. So according to the IRS, funeral expenses are only deductible on Form 706, a separate tax return used by an executor of a descendant's estate to calculate the estate uh, tax owed and to compute actually the, the generation skipping transfer tax. So it's one of those things where, again, you have to see what really works for you. So what's the bottom line here is when, when you think about the Form 1041, remember that the Form 1041 is really an IRS income tax return filed by the trustee or representative of an, of an estate or trust. You don't have to do it yourself, nor could you anyway. So especially if you have uh, several forms and several uh, that you have to remember, no, it's just crazy, okay? And one thing I want to say here is that we need to understand what really matters to you. And uh, it's, it's one of those things where you have to actually uh, file the uh, form 1041 by the 15th day of the fourth month after the close of the tax year keep in mind that this is important because if you do not file within that time uh, time frame if you will you are going to uh, to to uh, incur penalties and you do not want to have that it's one of those things where you 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 would rather just file the form even if we had mistakes then actually not file at all or file filing late because there are penalties for both scenarios and the bottom line here the IRS is not going to change this because they are so happy that you're working on another on another project and so they're happy they're giving you they're really giving you some slack no 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 they, will, they want to make sure that the uh, the information is correct and that you are providing uh, straightforward information that you are reporting on time and uh, not really trying to game the system. And uh, this is pretty good. Thank you so much for your attention. Let's do a quick recap here. So. I give you an overview of, the, of today's situation and then I give you the steps also. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Until then, remember, stay marvelous.